Hey fellas, <clears throat> 265 Chevy here on August 19th. See a training. You can see that the 97 Nissan's back up in the air. Well, that was the problem. Starter went out yesterday. Uh, left me stranded. Uh, had, some, uh, had my wife. Somebody pushed me and uh, popped the clutch in the starter and went about my business, brought it home. I need to get a new starter. So I took the starter off today. It's raining. You know, so uh, I get another starter. And that was a pain in the butt to get off. It's gonna be even more of a pain in the butt to get back on. No, no room. No room whatsoever. And I haven't made any videos, but uh, I have been um, I have been getting stuff done. Um, things are just piling up. I mean, doctor's appointments and dentist appointments and let's see um, stuff like that. And um, I got the air conditioning done. Um, Kind of got really um, pissed off at that. So I finally called Fredericks and I talked to them. And I got to admit, you know, the um, um, fact I talked to all three places the place that I bought it, because I got an extended warranty. Well, the extended warranty don't come from Fredericks, it comes from another company. And the whole thing is, is that. They all got their money, so, you know, you have, just have to wait on the part. But it was over two months. And I said, this is ridiculous. So I, I want to be made whole. You know, I don't want to wait on the part anymore. So talking to Fredericks, Fredericks to decide to call Bartos, which is where I got it from. And um, they pretty much said the, the people with the warranty, they dropped the ball. You know, because the part was on back order for, for so long that they should have called and made me whole instead of me calling. But I had to do all the work. So that just shows you if you don't, if you don't stay on top of it and do your, you know, your due diligence to get what's right for you, people ain't don't care. They're not going to do their jobs. They're just going to let you wait on that board until whenever that board comes in. So, you know, you got to speak your mind, you got to, you know, you do it in a nice way, in a polite way, but you make common sense. And like I told Fredericks, I said, somebody's going to have to make me whole. I'm tired of, you know, uh, have to sleep in another room when I have, you know, a room that has an air condition and, you know, there's a board that's, wait that's your board that we're waiting on from China or wherever. So, I don't want to wait no more. So, I'm going to make a long story short. They called Bartos, and they gave me a new air conditioner. So, got through that rigmarole. Then, I went and picked up a part, which I'll show you all in a little bit, for the Firebird. They're coming through, walking through the alleyway. That air conditioner right there normally drips out like, it, like it's doing. Kind of see it's, I don't know if this is going to focus, maybe not, but let's not go all that way. But, um, you know, I'm drips, but then out of the corner of my eye, I saw it dripping from another area that I normally never saw it dripping. So, I went and investigated that. It's dripping on the inside. It needs to be clean, needs to be serviced. So, I have that on my agenda now because it's just going to rot out all the cells, the inside, and all that. Well, so, there's something else I got to do. Well, let's get to some funner things. Okay, well, I got this side of the motor pretty much figured out. You know, um, got the air conditioning in. Got the tensioner. Got the alternator. Got the brackets all in for the alternator. Got where all the wires go. Got all the wires connected in the back. Got the EGR stuff connected. 
So, got all that figured out. I was waiting on a part, because so I, I really, because this is all going to be disassembled again. I just wanted to figure out where all this stuff goes, because I didn't really know what bolts went where. So, like I said, you had to dig through the books, to you know, and look through the internet to try to figure, okay, this goes here, that goes there, stuff like that. Now I have this side to do, but I am going to take this, you know, it's not, it's not bolted tight at all, it's just all loose. Take it apart. This air conditioning's bad for sure. I know that it went out before the car got wrecked, so I just that was just put on for a mock-up. And uh, so I was waiting on this part. And this is the plenium. I got powder coated. I uh, did a lot of extensive work on this. Uh, sanded it down a lot. You know that was. A few months back, even maybe six to eight months, I don't know if it was a long time, but I sanded all the roughness off. You know, it came out okay. Uh, right here, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see, but it actually, apparently, see on this side, it came out very smooth and nice. Now on this side, it bubbled a little bit. You know, it's called um, uh, gases that are in the metal that popped up. So I guess they didn't leave it in there long enough. I mean, they didn't they didn't preheat the part good enough or something. So I mean, he said that he would correct it, but you know, it's only on this side, and uh, so. Uh, Told him don't worry about it, you know. Um, you're not really going to see it all that much. Um, so, but I wanted, I was just going to clear it, but I was scared that the clear would, since it gets kind of hot in here, was going to wind up yellowing or whatever. So, I was thinking about doing these, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. I have a powder coating thing. And if this is the stuff that they can do, I'm pretty sure that I can do just as good. You know, um, I have powder, I have some powder up in there. I think it's up in there or over there. But I also have an oven, which is back here. But I didn't want to do that part. The part really wasn't that expensive. There's the oven right there. But um, the part wasn't that expensive to get done. Um, it did take a little bit of my money as, you know, the, the budget on this car that I have left. But, you know, I wanted to get it done. So I, I just bit the bullet and did it. So, um, um, or I might just paint these. I don't know. Or I might just leave them bare aluminum. But, you know, with the bare aluminum, you know what happened. It usually whitens and stuff like that. Or I could usually, I got some stuff called Shark Tank. I think that's what it's called, shark, and you, it's like a, it seals it, you know, maybe I can put that on it, I don't know, I haven't made up my mind yet, I'll figure it out, because if I do powder coat it myself, which this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do different stuff like this, is to learn how to do different stuff like powder coating, and uh, like double R restoration, how he does the bolts and stuff like that, I like to know how to do all that, because I'm very interested in that stuff, I like how it looks, how it looks, I like how it looks afterwards. You know, all it is, it takes time, you know. And it seems like a lot of other people want me to get finished this project and more quickly than, than I want to get. I mean, I want the project finished, but I also want it to look nice, you know. So, you know, but I also want it to be a learning experience, too. I want, I want to learn on different things. You know, uh, this might be, you know, I might be able to powder coat some, some things for other people, make a little bit of money for the Chevelle or wh whatever. That's the kind of way I'm looking at it. Not charge, you know, uh, outrageous prices or whatever. Not try to kill them, you know, give them a deal and make me a little money. I don't know. It depends on how it, how it comes out. But that's why I want to learn these different things. Because, you know, um, the older I get, you know, um, different things, you know, harder and harder to make money. So uh, if there's things that I can do around here in my shop to make a little, a little cash, then it would be... Uh, be a nice thing to do so I haven't made up my mind you know what I'm gonna do about that but this came out okay I think it's gonna look good 
Now let's see what it looks like on the car. Let's see if I can put it on there with one hand. Uh oh. Let's see. Uh -oh. That's what it looks like on the car. I think it looks pretty good. I gotta bolt it down. So now since I got this part back, I can bolt I can bolt the plenium down to the intake manifold and then you can put in the, the uh, fuel rail, which is this right here. You put in the fuel rail, which I gotta clean up and uh, pull this and see how that rubber uh it's like a to rubber um I forgot what it actually does it actually pumps the fuel it's like a like a little small pump so I got I don't know if I gotta check the rubber see if it's good or bad or whatever I gotta pull this apart so and you know and clean up the the, uh, the lines and stuff like that and uh, put and put the injectors in and then put put that in and then I can start wiring it up working my way outwards you know and then try to get the the top of it done and then work my way forward but i, I was waiting on this part it took him about a week and a half you know got some new tubes water tubes you see that one check out how bad the old one is the old one's pretty bad Let's see, got all the rough stuff in there Hey, let me check this out. This one was, I don't know if y'all can see that. That one's totally clogged. That wasn't getting any water through it. You can see that? I don't know if it's at the flare. Yeah, there you go. See, you see that? That one right there is totally clogged. I wasn't getting any water through it. So I got a new one of those. I mean, I had it a long time ago. I bought it before everything. It was hard to find the parts. So, I mean, still getting things done. Cars coming little by little. Um, we're going to start them. Um, took it out today. Uh, got to work. So I'll probably pick it up Tuesday. Call them up, order it tomorrow. At least it ain't going to cost me none because I got a, a lifetime warranty on that starter. I put that starter in 2014. So, you know, it lasted four years. So I'm pretty sure that was probably my problem. The starter had been going once it go out. So when it got hot, it started dragging. You know, um, I never did, had to, never got the opportunity to throw the cold water on it like Iceman told me to. You know, uh, throw some water on it and see if, you know, if it starts right back up. But, um, but it went totally out, so I'm pretty sure that's the problem. You know, so, uh, I gotta go, uh, I saw on, uh, on, um, uh, Joe Daddy's Garage, they got some, uh, lights at the Harbor Freight that looks pretty cool. It's like a magnetic, it's a little flat flips, and, uh, I want to go pick me up some of those, because it's working on a neat, that. It was a pain in the ass, really, trying to get the light up in there. I think that light would work good. And plus, I got to uh, replace the wire wheel. This is, this looks like it's uh, done. So, replacing that. So, just a couple of maintenance stuff that I got to pick up. So, I'm just going to wrap it up here and finish down here. Cleaned up a little bit. Didn't really work on a bird any today. Um... But I'll get to it when I get some time. I'll, I'll jump back on it. But it's coming, you know, little by little. You know, um, you'll get there. I've been waiting this long. What the hell? I'm not gonna kill myself. But um, it is what it is. You know, I got so many other things to do, like the air condition, that air condition. Um, a microwave went out last night. But well, it still works. But see, definitely kills me. The air conditioner's 2016, I bought it, and the kitchen's been done since 2016. Um, 
All that was brand new, brand new appliances, you know. Cost me, you know, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, whatever the hell it cost me. But uh, two years later, the microwave, the, the board goes out so you can't even see the numbers on the board. I mean, the way they make stuff nowadays is just pathetic, just really pathetic. You know, so I'm going to have to call them up. It, that's under warranty, too. So hopefully they can come out, take a look at it, fix it, or whatever they got to do. So, you know, the best thing to do nowadays, fellas, is spend, especially if you're going to buy something that's going to be a little bit expensive, is buy the warranty. Because uh, uh, the way they make stuff nowadays, it's worth it. Now, back in the past, back in the day, it wasn't worth it. It, lasted, it outlasted you. But nowadays, this shit don't last. It's made cheaply. People don't care. You know, they're all disgruntled. They're not getting paid any money. So they're just throwing the shit together and say rock and roll and, and you know, waiting for a check. You know, um, and predominantly, most of it's probably made in China anyway. And them poor bastards, you know, they don't even really get a check. They are forced to probably work for under no pay. So how do you think those people feel? You know, I know they're happy they have a job, but, uh, you know, I probably don't feel too good. Now I'm just rambling. Still got a lot more parts. I got to go get those lines made up for the, um, for the, um, power steering. The power steering lines, I got to get them made up, um, get them remade, uh, painted, um, painted this. This is the control arm. I mean, not the control arm, the arm for the steering, the steering arm. So I painted that. That's all painted. So I got that done. Uh, got this all clean. Got to take that stuff off and put that on. So, I mean, you know, little by little, I'm getting there. But uh, you have a good day. I just wanted to give you all a little, a little look and see and, you know, vent a little bit to you guys and show you all that I'm still alive and still kicking and still working and, you know, all that other good stuff. So, uh, wish me luck on the Nissan. And, uh, probably why I got up in the air, probably doing all change and a couple other little things, you know, I need to do to it. So Y'all have a good one. Later.